What now? What do we do next? We did the countdown, but I don't remember what we did next. Great. Talk about the camera. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're here. We're, we're on. <laughs> I'm Gary Hopper. We're here on Rock, Paper, Hang Grenades with the Honorable John Heichel. And our guest is the Honorable Jane Cormier, who is also the president of New Hampshire Right to Life. But before we get started, i got to talk about something super cool. Not that everything else we're going to talk about isn't super cool. I'm not trying to insinuate that there's some things that are less or more cool. But your stuff. But this is super cool. Okay. So years ago, I bought a uh, this handgun off a, uh, a friend in the legislature. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Paul. That would be super cool. But anyway, I bought this from a friend of mine in the legislature from up north. And it's a... It's really, really unique because it looks like a forty, a small forty-five, but it's it's uh, just so you can tell this. There's uh, nothing in my sleeve, but anyway, it looks like a small forty-five, but it isn't. It's actually a three fifty-seven Magnum. Move it to your right. The microphone's in the way. There you go. Okay, so it's actually a three fifty-seven Magnum, and what I did because I I always try to do you know, do things that I probably shouldn't. I took the slide apart and I polished it and I polished the, uh, the uh, slide release and the, uh, the safety and had them sent out and had them titanium nitrated. And then I, uh, on, the, on the back strap and the front strap, I EDM'd or electro discharged machined the uh, checkering on both, both sides. I did that mainly because I was told it can't be done. <laughs> and um, got it all back together, and it didn't work. Ah. But because it's such a unique gun, nobody would even fix it. Until I ran into, in Dunbarton, I was taught Jay's Gun Shop in Dunbarton. You can look it up. So I, I said, Jay, I get this coon, and I can't find anybody to work on it. He says, oh, I'll do it. Well, why, couldn't, why couldn't they fix it? Why because wouldn't they it fix was it? unique enough where they didn't want to touch it. And so I brought it to uh -huh. him. And he started going through the paces of trying to figure out is a slide binding, this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally got it back together, and now it actually cycles and everything. Wow. Because it was my mistake. You know, I just, you know, I, I knew enough to get myself in trouble. Uh -huh. but not, no, I wasn't a gunsmith, just a machinist. And so, anyway, it's freaking working good. I can't wait to get out. I just you like it? it? Huh? You like it? Oh, I love it. Good. And uh, I just can't wait to get that out on the range and... It's just so much recoil and, and muzzle flash. It's just super cool. Oh, oh. Anyway, Jay's Gun Shop and Dunbarton, they're awesome. So that was my plug for Jay. And uh, what, what did I want to talk? Oh, yeah, I want to talk. We had, Jane and I got in a conversation, and I'm not going to mention who because it's not relevant. There's a state legislator in New Hampshire who apparently is a card-carrying Satanist. Oh, yeah. Okay, and so there was we we got in a discussion with him, and he was kind of embarrassed by, seemed like it. I don't know if you got the same sense, but embarrassed like it that it was his private matter, right? And that it wasn't relevant to his voting. And why does anybody care? And I think it absolutely matters. When we were growing up. But you think they would ever hire, uh, elect a Satanist to president of the United States? We had a hard. They had a hard. No. I, I don't know. We hope not. No, we I doubt not. it. I, I would, I not would a cart. Not somebody who's openly. Yeah, I would assume there hasn't been one. Yeah, but I, I don't. I'm I, not sure there hasn't been one. I don't. But know. I know there wasn't <laughs> one openly. I don't know. Right. Because like the the big, openly yeah yeah the the biggest one was uh, um, that wasn't the norm was Kennedy and people were upset because he was Catholic. Yep. And people were afraid that his loyalty was to, going to be to the Pope and not to the Constitution. He's the only Catholic president, Correct. by the way. Yeah. yeah, interesting. They don't want the Vatican then, that close to Washington. Right. Yeah. And, and then later on, the big one was uh, uh, Nixon, because he was a Quaker, mm -hmm. and they didn't, they didn't, weren't. People were a little upset about that. But if you look at um, all our presidents, have been Protestant. Yeah. And Romney was Mormon. 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 That was one that, of his that big bothered drawbacks. people, and, and I. I yeah. don't know why. Uh, well, I guess the closest would be Obama, right? Social Justice Church that he went to. Yeah, which yeah. I think did well, have Reverend some. Wright. That's right. I think there was some um, political question there. 
only because what what really is supported in a in a in a in a church that is totally so social justice oriented is much political you know they talk about political stuff all the time so i'm yeah. not so sure that that one doesn't impact uh, a politician of course it did you know I'll, i i will say that it absolutely did in mm -hmm. that if you look at Reverend Wright's church, of course, it's a United, it's a UCC church, mm -hmm. United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. If at the time, I don't know what, I haven't been there to their website for years, but if you went to the United Church of Christ website and looked at the policies that Obama supported, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they are right parallel. There. Yeah. So no, his so religion did. absolutely affected how he. Right governed how you would govern right and that that is an important thing i think for anybody that signs up to be a public servant it is how what what is the major force behind how they will govern and if it's a you know a strong religious tie to that which will usurp our founding principles that's something i think to pay attention to it's contrary to the constitution exactly. especially yeah yeah see sovereignty yeah mm -hmm. so i'm going to try to read this this is um because he he claimed that his religious religion didn't have anything to do with governing and uh, John and I, and you know that the Constitution originally you had to be a Christian to even be in the legislature. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I want to read the first part of Article 6. This is the original Article 6, and I don't read out loud very well. I usually had Matt do that. But anyway, Article 6 of the New Hampshire Constitution, as it was written in 1783, as morality and piety, piety is a strange word, is still in the Constitution, uh -huh. but piety means reverence for God and family. So as morality and pi piety, rightly grounded on evangelical principles, will give the best and greatest security to government and lay in the hearts of men the strongest obligation to do subjugation. And as the knowledge of these is most like, likely to be propagated through society by the institution of public worship of the deity deity is capitalized mm -hmm. and the the public instruction of morality and religion therefore to promote those important purposes the people of the state have a right to empower and do hereby fully empower the legislature to authorize from time to time the several towns parishes bodies corporate or religious societies within the state to make adequate provisions to their, at their own expense for the support and maintenance of a public Protestant teachers of piety, religion, and morality. So if they didn't think morality and, and relig uh, uh, Christ Christianity was important, right. they certainly wouldn't have written that. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it was central, and it's central to our founding because the founders understood that we're all flawed creatures. We are, you know, basically fighting our morality all the time. So it would make no sense to have this great experiment take place in the absence of morality or piety, as they were saying. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense to me. And deity was uh, a pro uh, it's a it's a proper noun. It's capitalized. Right. Yeah. So they're specifically they're, they're saying God. God. Right. It's referencing God. Right. And that I believe is the uh, sixth amendment of the New Hampshire Constitution yeah, yeah, yeah. pre 1968. Yes. And if you read post-1968, which I've done a ton of research trying to find out how did that change. It was gutted where none of that exists in the post-1968 uh, wow. Constitution. And it was changed. And I've asked Charlie Arlinghouse. I've asked a lot of people wow. who I thought would give me an answer. And where education is only mentioned in one very minimal line right now, but none of that is. Isn't that interesting? And the entire... The entire body, almost the entire body of that, what you just read, is gone from today's Article 6 I had Article no idea the about that. That's a shame. Boy, oh, that's, yeah. that was a foreshadowing, wasn't it? Yes. And did it happen Terrible. in a, uh, in a uh, convention? Who We're knows? We're not sure. I don't know. But if you read it, you read the New Hampshire Constitution today, it says amended 1968. Mm -hmm. And what they meant was all of that good stuff was gutted. Yep. And that meant every town was responsible for paying their teachers. And they were responsible for taking care of the education of their town. Right. But now it's a statewide thing, and mm -hmm. it's all changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
I'd love to find out if somebody could ever answer that question for me. Yeah, because when, I, when I, did that change? I love the fact that it's talking about more uh, under. See, the whole the whole idea of Article Six is that if people are governed, their morality is governed by God, mm -hmm. then you don't need government to do it. Right, natural because rights. Natural rights. Mm -hmm. If you, if everybody is treats each other with a certain amount of respect and stuff like that, you need very little, if any, government right. to control to maintain a, a law, law and, and order Gary, or peace. Gary, absolutely, and it's not a misnomer. It's not a mistake to just look with some some common sense and see that the further that we get away from the Creator, you yeah. know, the Creator. The, f the more government takes its place. The growth of government and progressivism grows because there's a vacuum. And the government, you know, let's face it, progressivism needs to get God out of any culture that it's trying to, you know, sure to get into because that's the only way you, you have to have government in their mind or God. Right. If you have God, the government can be smaller. You, you have a different whole concept. However, if you get God out, and government grows. Yeah, well, and it and will I, become I think, the god. I, I think a, a perfect example of that is in the streets of Chicago. Oh my gosh! The streets of Chicago. Now, uh, the streets of Chicago was. I think they've had two thousand shootings already yeah, this year. Two thousand shootings. How do the people stay there? I wonder how they stay. But if you look at that Article Six, it's, it talks about the necessity for piety. Yeah. Reverence for God and family. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what's happening in Chicago, the United States government and the government of Chicago has basically paid people to dissolve their families. Absolutely. Okay? Because they, they pay little girls. You know, if you have a child out of wedlock, we'll give you this much money. Mm -hmm. If Supported you have a it. husband, mm -hmm. tough luck. Right. So they have financially... The Democrats and some Republicans yes. have financially, and as far as I'm concerned, deliberately dissolved the families in places like Chicago. Absolutely. If that isn't racism, I don't know what is. It's the ultimate form, and I think that it's kind of ironic that the, the left that will be supporting these lifestyles that, that don't offer hands up but hands out. Right. There is a good percentage of them that knowingly are doing that because they want to keep the brass ring. I think that, unfortunately, the there's a much greater number. I think that's even indicative here in New Hampshire. There's a much greater number that knows the game but are so cowardly they will go along to get along and not rock the boat. Right. Therein lies, I think, the greater sin. Right. That's the greater sin because it's recognized. Well, we just had... Because they do nothing. That's and they, rec they know there's a... Overtly. They know it. it's overtly recognized. That's right. Well, it right. was with re a Republican governor... And Republican legislature was just allowed um, kindergarten yes. to start. Right. Well, public funding. Public right. funding, which is now another expansion of government. In which it will be. Independency. That's right. And control. And control. Make no mistake, those kids are going to be in there now. Whether or not, and that whole argument about whether or not these youngsters with brains that are not near ready, some of them, to be doing what they'll be doing in a kindergarten classroom. Right. Um, you know, that's a whole separate, that's a whole separate thing. But now the parents, you know, are put in the position that that influence, whatever influence that might be, which to me is even just as scary as not knowing what it could be with the teacher that's going to be in that classroom, um, you know, now here we go. We're going to pay for that now for everybody. And we're going to force you to pay for that for everybody. It's just crazy. You know, we've gone so over the mark. And, and the bleeding heart liberal, which we kind of used to go, ha ha, you know, he's a bleeding heart liberal, right? Well, they've been replaced <laughs> by big bad progressives. And it does not matter what the party is anymore. I never talk Republican anymore. I never talk Democrat. Right. I talk progressive and conservative okay. because that in that is where the battle is it right. has no more That's there's it. no more you can't even bring up the, the the political parties anymore because the republicans have bought in so so much with the with the left that very how many do you know will really stand up and say no a handful whether right. you're even looking at your senate your federal senate or your con your, your your congressional branch no i mean it's painful it is. You know, but well, gosh, those those uh, those dollars have to keep flowing. You know, and if you say the wrong thing, or you're you're going to do something that's unpopular, 
you'll lose that money. Well, too bad. Right. We're, we're, it's going to actually have to just go bust before we can actually figure out I, I, how to I build it up. I know you're right, but I don't want you to be. I don't want to be right either. And I, I tell you what, it's been years to come to that because I was the... It's obvious, though. I you mean, have to. You know, it you has can, to. You can see the progression. Right. I used to say, I used to joke about um, one day we'll be just uh, taking the children or the babies right out of the maternity ward and turning them over and they'll be educated. Yeah. And I think now we're down to three years old, right? Sure. Sure. It used to be five or six. I think it's three now. They're getting them early. And, and and I and I just I was joking about it twenty years ago. Now I'm seeing, geez, we're down to, I think three years old. Yeah. Well, let's face it. That's what the communists were putting into place, well, right? In a couple of years, we'd be taking them right out of the right out of the maternity, right out it, of the hospital. And it's kind of funny because Russia and itself has is starting to have a little bit of a renaissance. I'm sure that you know yeah, with the, all yeah. the crime that's going on because yeah. there's all kinds of mob mob situations happening in Russia right now. But they are sort of having a renaissance here of understanding, you know, government that isn't so oppressive or large or, or you know, f taking control of the family. Did the churches, I, I sang over there in St. Petersburg, I was there for about three weeks, a long time ago. And this was, this was right <laughs> at, I can't remember how long ago, how sad is that? Maybe 20 years. That's pretty awesome though, you got to do that, you know. During the yeah. Soviet Union? Uh, it was still, yeah. And um, when when I was over there, I was just I could not believe these gorgeous cathedrals, these these religious buildings, stripped and broken and bare. Right. And you would see the little chaplets with the most beautiful ornate uh, settings, and then of course no nothing in them, no statue, no memorabilia, no memorying, memorial in, in memorial kind of stuff, just bare. You'd go into these facades. And I can remember, you know, of course, when we were told, I was there with an opera company, and we were told to not look at anybody. We were not allowed to use public access. We had to only have private drivers. And I was, this was hard for me at that point, uh, to not laugh. Don't laugh in public. Right. And, and I thought that was so odd. I thought, what do you mean, don't laugh in public? And they said, because they will know immediately right. that you are not from the country. And... As a, as a younger younger person, that affected me to the point where, can you imagine having to live in that kind of a depressive... No, no First Amendment over there, huh? Oh, no. so depressive. You know what? <laughs> Go there today. Yeah. It's all back. Some of it is. Oh, I, I, uh, listen, St. Petersburg, it is beautiful. I know, but what I'm getting at is I had a friend of mine who just recently went to... I forget. It was one of the one of the uh, Soviet bloc countries. Okay. Okay. Do you know which one? I don't remember. Um, and he gets on this train, uh, a bus. Yeah. Two hours to his destination with his wife, because she's uh, she works. She had to go there for work. Mm -hmm. No conversation whatsoever. Yes. Two hours on a. Can you imagine being on a bus yeah. in, in the United States for two hours, yeah. not hearing anybody talk? Yeah. Nobody dares to. Nobody yeah. dares to. Yeah, because everybody's they, listening. Everybody's listening. They right. said they finally get to talk to somebody privately. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, it's just habit. Because right. when during the Soviet Union, it, every like you said, don't everybody's even talk in listening. Your house. You, they, don't even talk in your you house. Aren't, you weren't even, then. yeah, like you said, you don't even talk in your own right. home. It was so over the, the top. Because the kids would, would rat you out. Right. Your own children would, would turn on you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure some of that's still there, but I think I think what I'm saying that this is holdover, but absolutely, it's still. it's still there. It sure is. But at least and Putin was head of all that, by the you know he I mean. was. But you know that they I don't know if this is he true. Might, he may be coming around, but he was. I I, re I did some research on that because my church my uh, priest was telling me that there was a conversion there, and. I started researching it, and I think there was. I think that in the early, you know, 2000, he started to make the rounds to churches. And when you look at the progression of it, that's when all of the artifacts and the mm -hmm. statues and the decorating, all that great stuff that's part of the church, returned. And um, to this day, I, you can find very new video out there, like within a year, with him visiting a church and... Um, Piety being that key word, unless he's a really good actor, and I don't think he's that good, um, I think he's a believer. And, and I think that that's been good for Russia. I think Russia has, of course, it's still what it is, but hey, at least you can go to church. Right, right. Those, those Russian Orthodox churches were just 
They're yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, just the work, art. I mean, they were real. And the priests never gave up. Right. Those priests over there, the Orthodox priests in Russia, right. Ukrainian, all of those East, Eastern Orthodox right. priests, they never gave up. They just kept going, even if it was just a small, mm -hmm. you know, bare mm -hmm. little place. Right. You know, I'm wow. so happy it's coming back. That's got to take a lot of faith. No kidding. Yeah. That's the, so well, easy to give up. It is so easy. Well, we tell everybody. I'm always telling everybody. I tell my kids this even in class. I teach at Founders Academy, and um, I teach music, you know, chorus. But everything I teach is under a, a thought of, of something larger than them. You know, I don't talk about God. I don't talk about uh, anything in specificity like that. But the human spirit and the ability to, you know, be more than you ever thought and the opportunity in this country to do that is omnipresent. We just have to take advantage of it. And, you know, you can do that in every sector. But, but truly, the, I think it all comes down to the fact that faith is not a noun. When faith becomes a noun, you lose it. When faith is a verb, you have a chance for growth. You have a chance to build something that's, you know, that's worth living, that's worth keeping. So... You know that's that's really important. Yeah, I think we're, I think that's one of the problems is people are uh, not talking about faith anymore. I mean, I think if you you look look at some of the founding fathers and and the amount of time oh. they spent talking about God and their faith yeah. and the necessity for faith was huge. Nobody talks about it anymore. They're embarrassed to. No, I think they're afraid, right? Because you know you're not supposed to talk about your faith because it's a separation. I hate that argument. That is. Right. Oh, I hate BS that argument. argument. Right. Hey, and it came from England. I mean, it was the king. I mean, he was the he was the ruler. Separation yeah. of church and state is has nothing to do with our constitution. Right. Zipola. Exactly. And, but people don't that. know it. But the left has said it effectively so much Not that the lay it. folk believe it. Yeah, right. the, lay, the lay folk believe there is probably a quote somewhere in the constitution <laughs> that says it doesn't exist in the does, constitution. It's right. not there. It's sad. In fact, you had to have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior to be governor of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Wow. Think about that one. Right. John, John <laughs> Adams, in the early 1800s, because he died in the early 1800s. Anyway, early 1800s, goes into Massachusetts State Convention, gets a standing round of applause because of who he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the convention, he tried to introduce an amendment to the Constitution to extend freedom of religion to the Jews on the basis that the Jews were good, honorable people. Mm-hmm. It failed. Yeah. Well. So if they really believed that freedom of religion included Satanism, right. that is just not even close to possible. No, it's not. Well, you know, um, one thing about specifically that does directly address what you were talking about with this specific, um, you know, state rep, on the website that he is the card-carrying member of, right, one of the points that it talks about is championing or challenging, um, and what is it, um, confusing and, what was the other word? That they support confusing and chaotic, was another word like that, uh, you know, as part of their, as part of their Forming endeavors. Right, yeah. yeah, because yeah. that only makes sense, because if you're, if you look at it like a, uh, an actual battle, mm -hmm. The best way to defeat an enemy is yes. to confuse them. That's right. And, and that's part of the tenets. Yeah. Of divide what? Them. Well, confuse them, divide them, whatever Correct. it takes to make them less confident in their position. And they've divided us into oh, yeah. so many different sure. groups and subgroups. Right. We belong to this and that. And we, I mean, we're all divided into Absolutely. hundreds of pieces. Confusing and chaotic, I think, is what it says. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's easy. You, have to, you have to laugh because this this person is a libertarian right right Doesn't how does that like work <laughs> yeah right <laughs> well no <laughs> how does that work knows, i don't think he knows what he is <laughs> well Maybe. No, i yeah. i don't know i look at and i'm not placing him in the same category but i look at there's some libertarians not all that look at libertarianism as a political rationalization for self-indulgence absolutely it, carl task kyle tasker would have been one of those yeah you know, he wanted everything to be, you know, to laws to go away. Correct. So, which is anarchy. Which is anarchy. Let's understand that the, once you get to that level of thinking, nothing is nothing means anything. Right. You can kill. You can steal. You can do whatever. 
it's impunity at that point because there are no laws. Right. But it, it, it negates the one premise that the founders knew, and that was that we are flawed. Right. Right. That will never work. We're flawed. We're always going to have bad choices that we're going to take advantage of. We need to have something that allows us liberty, personal liberty, but also has a structure to offer everyone justice. Right. You know, it, it's very, it's very yeah, weird. Anarchy, anarchy takes away the liberty of m most everybody in it except for the most powerful. Except for the most powerful, correct. That's it. That's it. And I'll tell you what, New Hampshire Right to Life, which, which I, you mentioned I'm president of, um, that was a good segue. It wasn't, wasn't that, that wasn't that, was, that good? Was that genius? Like, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I maintain that the, that whole issue of life can be you can you can put the dot 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 right over to that thought, the the thinking that some life you can fight for. Right, and others you can't. You you shouldn't or you can't, is absolute insanity. Right. Insanity, and and it allows only the powerful. To have the say, right. right? Whoever's in power, and that's not what we're supposed to be about. Right. That's it's right. About into, yeah, life, liberty, and the, the pursuit. pursuit. Of we yes. should be bottom-up governing. Of right? course, of course. But we, yeah. Well, then, but then you have the libertarian or the other person that will get in and say, "Well, liberty is the woman being able to to choose for her body and herself." Well, isn't that great? Show me where it says that that woman's life overrides the one that she's carrying. The separate entity, separate DNA, separate possibilities, separate individual qualities. I understand. I'm a woman. I get it. Right? Yep. It's hard. But let's face it. Abortion is forever. Yep. Forever. You cannot take it back. Hey, Nine months ends. Do you have... Um, uh because, because the argument always is they go to the extreme and say, well, what about rape and incest? Okay. So what about rape so and wait, incest? No, let me, let me get to my point. My yeah. point is the women that actually get an abortion, regardless mm -hmm. of why, right. have a pretty high suicide rate. Much higher than, than normal, yes, right. normal populations. They do. So so here's the thinking behind that. Is there, is there post-traumatic stress associated with it too? Huge huge and and the dirty little lie that the person that the pro aborts will will feed is that that's not the truth but they know by far the the larger majority of these women that buy into the myth that it's nothing have physical sometimes physical and usually some sort of an emotional component that that has been triggered right and it doesn't it's you know you don't have to go too far to think about why that would be because at some level as a living organism, right, whether you like the science or not, right, certain things happen when you get pregnant, all right? There is a motherhood thing happening. Sorry if nobody likes to hear that and if they think that, oh, you know, that's just silly old-fashioned stuff. Sorry. Any animal will do what it can to fight for its young. That is a natural biological survival of the fittest thing. Right. Now, if a woman decides through a mental reason, you know, a, a decision, I don't right. say mental, I meant a decision, right? Decision process. Which she believes is a rational decision. Correct, and does that. Why would anybody think that the organism that is now in tune and playing and being all ready to give birth is somehow just going to all fall away and they're going to happily go on their way and say, well, that was nice? That right. makes absolutely no sense. No, because I think it's... Um I have met a lot of people who have been in combat huh. and have seen a lot of death and killed people. Mm -hmm. It messes with your psyche. Of course. It takes years for some of the guys coming back from war to adjust. Mm -hmm. I believe that it is spiritually. Right. Because you have ration, your rational mind, which is great, except it can convince you of anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And I, I, anybody that's ever thought of killing somebody knows exactly what I mean. Mm -hmm. Your rational mind can convince you that anything is okay. But spiritually, it's different. it doesn't matter what your rational mind mean, uh, believes mm -hmm. because it has a, a, um, 
a natural reaction to murder. Correct. I believe and that. When a, a soldier goes and kills another human being, even though it's perfectly rational, right. they're doing it for everything they believe is the right reason, and I'm not saying they shouldn't. No, no, I understand what you're saying. There's a time for war. Even the Bible says there's a time Absolutely. for war. Okay, so I'm, I'm not criticizing. I'm uh, just I get you. There's going to be a reaction to that. There is a mental reaction mm -hmm. to actually taking the life of another human being. Correct. And a woman who has an abortion, as far as my understanding is, mm -hmm spiritually there is an absolute reaction to it absolutely and whether she logically acknowledges it or not is irrelevant right and and that is very important for folks to understand there is something that new hampshire right to life supports and it's called rachel's vineyard and we do several sessions of rachel's vineyard a year which offers post-abortive women an opportunity to deal with any kind of issue that they might have from having had an abortion yeah many times it's many years later many times it's women that you would have thought you know wouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't wouldn't affect have, them. right or they might not even be thinking about it that is so not the case and this this program rachel's vineyard has really helped women change i mean find the forgiveness that they're looking for and move on and try to come to peace with with a decision that they made but you know your rape and your incest and life of the mother are very specific issues um, and nobody wants to touch them because, let's face it, if you're raped and you become pregnant, what human being wants to be able to look that woman in the face and say, you have that baby, right? I mean, that's, wow. But the truth of the matter is, is the stats have proven that these women fare worse having the abortion than having the baby. Because, it, because it's, it just, you just added insult to injury. You have just killed Right. You've offered violence for violence. Yes. And at some point that does not meter out. Those women should be embraced. They should be supported. Yeah. They can give the baby up for, a, for, for adoption and to, a, to someone that will love that baby. And no one can refute the fact that a positive can result from that because it has happened. Oh, yeah, many, many times. Absolutely. And there are, by the way many women that have opted to keep the babies and of course the left won't tell you that either right. many women has there ever been a study uh, to show and i know we always talk about women and the effect of having an abortion mm -hmm. on women has there ever been a study that, you've, that you're aware of of an, the effect of a uh, yes. on a man on a man wow when, when he i mean are most of them just yeah they're told to sit down and shut up i mean that's a terrible I've thing i've never heard i've never heard of a man I don't think acting I have emotionally either. or feeling that 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 something bad just happened you know i but think i wonder if if psychologically is it is it somewhere in there that a man has that connection also i can't imagine they don't of a father absolutely absolutely and we're i'm very personally vocal about that aspect because i think we have just gone so crazy that the father of these babies have absolutely Zero no right, right and at all. and furthermore they're ostracized for wanting the right, right. i mean it goes far beyond than just not right. having it's, the right, well, it's, right. Not, it's, it's also it's also a complete contradiction totally because on one hand they have no right right but they have all the obligation right but when they become a father they're almost expected to correct be a father correct but until they have been granted that you mm -hmm. know uh we find that many, we hear from many guys uh, in our tribe. You know, we do an awful lot of out, outreach stuff where we'll be at, you know, functions like Market Days or Soul Fest or um, these other events that we go to. And we see guys all the time. I hear from guys all the time about how, how sad they still are. Wow. That they begged. Well, there you go. They begged their, their uh, you know, significant other to please have that baby and that they would take the baby. Wow. We hear that more than not. There you go. And so, to me, uh, I know that this, the people have, the, I think people have the idea that, uh, that most men are like this. And maybe it is, but that has not been my experience being so. in this position. I don't see how I it have, can be. I haven't seen because, it. Because, you know, yeah. It, now, if, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, I'm not positive. I think, I think there are some men who are. Undoubtedly, but, there are some. But, uh, there are and probably a lot. But I do know, and I've seen it, and from statistics I've read, that a man, if they get divorced, mm -hmm. and they've got kids, within 
almost invariably, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's very high. Within like seven years, they no longer have an association with that child. Oh my gosh, that's sad. Oh, it's horrible. Wow. I didn't know that one. Well, I I'm, and I'm not sure if, mm. if you if you look at if you know anybody, mm -hmm. you I'm sure you've met guys that I try to so. have uh, to do with their kids, and the mother uses the kids. Yeah, I've seen a, that as a uh, tool to attack the husband. Yeah, sick. And um, so eventually, they just kind of concede. Yeah. But well, it, they shouldn't. It's, it's about. I, I understand. <laughs> Don't concede. That. It's your baby. It's right. your kid. <laughs> yeah, but you got the courts going against you. You got yeah, the women going against you, and within a short order, the kids are against you. Maybe, but still, your kid. You don't give up. I get it. Stay with it. I get it. But I'm saying statistics show that, and I, I like. It's been too long since I read them, but right, right about seven years, it's, they're done. So, so you're thinking that because of that stat, it backs up the fact that most maybe, a lot of guys don't care. No, I'm just saying that it, it may. We may not have as intimate a connection with the unborn child as uh, as we might want to believe wow interesting i don't know i i don't know that i believe that i i, I unless you're talking i, I guess about one night stands either. where somebody's a philanderer and they're just you know out for for whatever um which i suppose is just a really psychopathic male right i mean taking advantage of that situation kind of you know. That's not that psychopath. It's pretty normal. Well, no, I think it is. Multiple, a serial person that's, that's you know, wreaking that's, havoc. That's called being 20. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> being 20 with, with a condom maybe is a little bit better, but, you know, better. what are you going to do? Anyway, yeah. yeah. Any ca in any case, um, I think one I fall into the psychopath. That's why I'm defending myself. Oh my! When I was t when I was a teenager, oh really? yeah. Yeah, I didn't oh. have anything to do with those kind of guys. Oh, fortunately, yeah. when I was growing up, hmm. but whatever. In any case, um, <laughs> New Hampshire right to life. Back to us. Yes. We're we're doing a petition drive right now, and I'm really working hard on, um, you know, trying to get folks to join our petition, and it's for this. We think that if we can get a couple of thousand or, you know, two, three thousand folks here in New Hampshire that will sign on to defunding taxpayer, taxpayer funded abortion clinics here in New Hampshire. Right. Um, if they're so great, let them fund themselves. There's no reason why taxpaying dollars should be sent to fund abortion clinics. Even if even if the money isn't going to There are ways quote, to do unquote, it. abortions. Right. How much money did New Hampshire give to uh, Planned Parenthood? Okay, I think the last one was what seven no, that was uh, that was the campaign here. I think it was around five hundred and fifty thousand okay, dollars. They gave them five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh this wait, last wait, wait, one. Wait, wait. Do you Planned mean the most recent North, one? Of Northern New England of Northern New England. Northern New England in okay. Vermont. Yeah. In Vermont, okay. Right, right. How much does a director of Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. in northern New England and Vermont make? Um, I want to say it's around $166,000, $170,000. Yeah. So taxpayer money is going directly into the pocket. Yes. Okay, so now this is very and important. they spend a million dollars on lobbyists or something. Oh, that was the other thing. They too, spend so. way much. Uh, there, there yeah, you go. Right. absolutely. A lot of money So on here's it. the dirty secret, secret that folks do not understand. They think, oh, you know, health services for women, la, la, la. Well, the left will have you believe that. One of the two most powerful lobbies in our government, federally and state, mm -hmm. is the abortion lobby. Right. Let no one kid you. Right. Billions of dollars, okay, some of it tax-paying dollars, are flooding to these politicians so that they will support women's issues. They don't care about women's issues. They care about greasing their palm and keeping them in power. Jean Shaheen gets an insane amount of money from the abortion lobby. It's not just Planned Parenthood. It's Emily's List. Take a look at those numbers. Horrifying. One issue, Emily's List, abortion. Right. One. I think that money could even make a Republican senator uh, change his vote. You think? I didn't, heard. Didn't he, uh, the, the guy who ran for Congress in Georgia. Okay. He received, I thought it was $700,000 from Planned Parenthood. Okay, the, the governor, the, the, the one that won. The one that lost. He, that's right, that's right. It was over seventy seven hundred thousand dollars on right. his campaign. On that's correct. On just one campaign. Right. right. He received $24.5 
million dollars, <laughs> and ninety percent of it was from out of state Hollywood, New York, and right. New Jersey. Right. So, so seven hundred thousand dollars from Planned Parenthood flowed to this guy's campaign. What? What part of a of a human being taxpayer thinks that that's a good thing? It is not about women's health care. They do lo they do the fewest numbers in the state of cancer screenings. Two percent. I thought they just referred percent. them to other. Two percent. Okay, two percent. They do no prenatal care. Zip. They do no mammograms. Zip. Okay. Why is this money flowing to them? Well, it doesn't go to support abortion. Okay, so we have fungible. Fungible means that there is no lockbox here, folks. Right. That money goes to Planned Parenthood of New England in Vermont, and we know from their last annual report that the bulk of the $550,000 they got a couple of years ago went to fund two salaries that were out of state. There was another salary here in the state, but those salaries funded our tax dollars went to Vermont to fund workers in those clinics. Wow. Why is that fair? New Hampshire taxpayers ought to get smart, and they ought to say, stop. Do not spend our money for private abortion clinics here in this state. We have ample community health centers to offer. No, ca no, no, no pay, no fee. Low-cost ca low care through Medicaid. Yep. There are multiple... 20 to 1 here in this state. But no, we need women's, we need Planned Parenthood of New England. We need the, the feminist health care clinic in Concord. We do not. Right. Let them fund themselves. If what they do is so important, let them, just like every other business here in New Hampshire, fund themselves. Yeah, so is, is this, excuse me, is this fight, is this fight to stop and eradicate abortion or is it to stop funding abortion this this money. fight that new hampshire right to life is doing right now yes. is to stop taxpayer funding of abortion here in new hampshire right. okay. period Great. and if you sign up if you go to nhrtl.org nhrtl.org right on the front page you'll see the petition you just hit the button you put in your email address you might i think they asked for your name and your address we sell none of our information our information does not leave NHRTL and you have my promise on it because I won't let it happen. Mm -hmm. That is private information that will go no further. The only thing that will go further is that your name and your address will go on a petition that we will then give to Governor Sununu to show him that 3,000 New Hampshire state citizens want this, this scam to stop. I don't, see, I don't think people understand the, the logistics of the scam. You're correct. <laughs> so what it is, is the state of New Hampshire gives Planned Parenthood $500,000, and they say we're not spending it on abortions. <laughs> so if you've got a clinic, they'll spend it on the secretary, they'll, send it on, they'll spend the 500000 maybe on the facility, on the heating, the lighting, the bookkeeping, the computers, the director of the Planned Parenthood. Correct. Okay, so all this stuff, okay, theoretically is only... That's where your taxpayer Correct. money goes. Correct. And the actual taking of the life, theoretically, is paid by something else. But we don't know that either. But we don't really There's no know. way to even check There's that. There's no way for right. that. Right. So it's it's all smoke and mirrors. All smoke it's and mirrors. It's not like they're spending $500,000 on mammograms. Correct. They're they don't spending, even have the machinery. They don't even have the equipment to do it. They, they, it's they too refer expensive. you. That's right. It's too expensive for them. So when you look up the propaganda, the one thing you'll see is only 3% of, of, of uh, our work at Planned Parenthood is abortions. What a lie. And this is why they do that. Because if you go in for an abortion, they're going to give you a pregnancy test. They're going to test you for STDs. They might give you contraception. They're going to give you, on the average, five other tests generated from that one abortion. Okay? So what do they do? They take all the numbers, and they use all those numbers generated from that. What did they come in for? An abortion. You right. see? So, so then they can say, oh, it's only 3%. Well, all those other tests were generated by the woman that you are taking in to abort the baby, offering them no other alternative. 
No, they actually discourage any other. Of course, they won't even discuss it. We know it from the the underground, you know, the 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 the, the, the calls videos. and yeah, stuff, yeah, and the yeah. videos that they don't even they tell people on the phones don't even offer the information. Right. It is an abortion factory, and yeah. it's wrong, and we should not be funding it through taxpayer dollars. Yeah, I mean, there's if there's enough liberals in this state that believe in killing the unborn. Mm -hmm. That they could take up a collection. Please and just do. Pay it. Fine. If you want, to, if you think that it, you want, that won't happen. By the by, <laughs> you're putting the money where the mouth is, so to speak. But you know what? The first step of this whole debate is to inform people. And I think any hardworking New Hampshire state senate, you know, citizen, ought to know that their money should not be flowing there. So four hundred and forty thousand dollars was given by the executive council by two Republicans. Joe Kenny and Russ Prescott, who mm -hmm. voted for this, to give them $440,000 more last month for HIV testing. So you tell me that, and they'll say, oh, well, nobody else bid for it. Yeah, of course nobody else bid for it because the beast will come after them. Yes, they will. You better find another way to open up that bidding because no small community health care has the resource to go up against Planned Parenthood. And when that bonding comes around, that bidding process comes around, they aren't going to bite. So stop funding the beast. Right. And you will see that these other clinics will jump to take these service, this money for these services for HIV of testing. Yeah. Of course they will. It's natural. That's what will happen. But we've got to, stick, we've got to cut the head off the beast. Yeah. That's why when you asked, what's the goal? That's the goal. It's not hidden. Stop funding Planned Parenthood. Go to NHRTL.org. Put your name on the petition and share. Share with your email list. Share with your Facebook friends. It's not your name that's going to make this successful. It's your sharing to others that will See, share it on. See, the thing is, is other, there's really good organizations out there like CareNet. Oh, my gosh, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. And I believe, from, if I remember, because we've had them on the show before, um, they won't take any funding. You know why? Because there's too many strings. Absolutely. Too much they're not alone. Most pregnant, I think all the pregnancy centers here in New Hampshire will not take, pro take public funding. They don't want anybody telling them what to do with the money. Not that it matters. I mean, look what Planned Parenthood's doing. Right. Right? right. Taking public funds. So NHRTL.org, and uh, you'll be able to help us get the word out, educate people, and get people on that list so that we can have some teeth when the discussion comes around next I time. I just can't believe that, that our government and hasn't stopped because I believe this is the only the only private company that receives taxpayer money certainly on this it's, level <laughs> it's, it's certainly on this level you bet. <laughs> I mean I don't get any of my business and I'm sure no other businessman I mean they may get subsidies to buy something but something yeah but nothing something, like this but nothing like just giving them money and they're intricate in our political system come on wake up I mean they're right. funding they own the political of system. course they own it why would we do that right you know why would any Republican do it you know why they do it to get reelected they're afraid of them <laughs> you bet right. your butt right. they're afraid of they're them they're afraid right. of them and, and I, you right. can't stop that I've tried I've spoken with them right. I've I mean I've been on the res the other side of these phone See, calls that's what I don't that, get that okay Republican will make a will make an excuse as to he'll, he'll deny what it really is about and he'll come up with a reason why that he yes. supported it Yes. And he can't believe that. He, that, he can't believe that. You're right. Or she can't believe that. You're right. Whatever it is. That is why your faith mm -hmm. is absolutely relevant to whether or not Agreed. and how you serve in, in, as a political, uh, as a politician. Mm -hmm. Because if it's, I'll, I'll give you an example of how horrible it is. And this blew me away. This is my Second term, I had a bill in to help for families, to, uh, and I had a legislator come up to me, a born-again Christian. I guess this kind of defeats my argument, too. Born-again Christian. I said, he said, I, Gary, I'd, I'd, I'd like to support your bill. I said, yeah, but mm. I'm in leadership. <laughs> I, I know that was coming. It's like, wow! You would allow... You have your Christian faith, you understand the Constitution, no. you have a Bible, and you would just yes. throw that all away for a parking space. It is why we lose. It is why we lose. They're right. afraid to stand for what's right. 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 The majority, it's very simple. Listen, I have said this for four years, and, you know, they can say that I'm the little, you know, what is that, little tilfoil hat gal. But the truth of the matter is, is the majority is with us. 
but the majority is silent, and yeah. they are afraid. And until they get some chutzpah, we're going to continue to lose. The Trump election, yeah. if for nothing else, rallied the idea that no matter what they say, if you follow through with what you believe is right, mm -hmm. you can win. Yep. Yeah. And I wish people would take the visceral right. lesson of that and move with it. Right. They don't. No, they don't, because it's hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, especially when you get to D.C., when there's so much money. Yeah, that's kind of that's, – I guess that that's just another world, another level of corruption that's beyond. It's a beyond. swamp. Yeah. Well, you know, you know I, it I, is a swamp. I posted on Facebook today because they, they, uh, they're going after Donald Jr. now. I know. Sad. Okay. And but what I said today on Facebook was that – and um, I'm sure you guys will agree – is basically, and it was this was the election was about one main theme, mm -hmm. and that was globalism versus nationalism. Correct. That's okay? correct. And the globalists are still upset. Yes. And they will do anything. Yes. Anything at all to keep attacking Trump and or in this case his son, mm -hmm. regardless of the validity of the argument. Yes. It has the validity of the argument or the reality of the situation is entirely irrelevant. Correct. Because they have to keep attacking. Right. Right. Because all they care about is globalism. Yes, no, absolutely. And they will keep doing it. I think that we shouldn't that if I if if I had a bird's eye ear of Trump's group, I would tell them stop feeding it. You look in the mirror and you say, we have work to do, folks. Let's, let's get rid of this. We have work to do. Just don't pick it up anymore. Why are they discussing it? The le now that the, they know that the public's getting sick of hearing it, you know, just say it's a witch hunt. We have work to do. Right. right. We, you know, we're going to take care of this this week. We have work to do. Right. That's what they should be doing. Get off it now. Stop Twittering. Don't engage it. Because you can't win that game with the left. The left has years and decades over us on how to shut people down, right. on how to overwhelm, of how to deceive. Yeah. They will win that game. You win it by being light. Show light. We have work to do. Let's get on it. Let's stop this. Yeah. Don't address it anymore. Why, why do they keep pulling it back in? They're making it news story when they do that. Yeah. We don't want the news story anymore. It's yeah, old no, news. Nobody even... No, I think most voters are, like you said, sick of it. Of course they are. They Why don't they, they use that? They know it's all BS. They've given it up now. Even if they believed Gary. I know people that did buy it. And you know what? If you start to listen to them now, they're saying, you know what? Enough. We, you know, they're getting it. Right. But why doesn't our side use that? Well, the thing is, is our side, if you call it our side, i.e. Republican. No, I don't. Okay, I call it our I'm side conservative. Our side, <laughs> There are multi, many Republicans in D.C. who are part and parcel yeah. of that globalist agenda okay. and are looking for any reason You're whatsoever right. to keep Trump from succeeding or – Undoubtedly. Uh, you know, but who's their boss? Or, or start screaming, burn the witch, burn the witch as right. soon as – So why are they doing that? Because they want to keep their seat. They want to keep their seat? Well, who's going to vote them out? Why don't we get going? Yeah. Why don't we start emailing them? We've heard enough. Stop. You're not dealing with the things that matter to me. But we don't. Right. And so they will keep fighting for their piece of the pie. Once they're scared enough that they could lose the seat, you'll see that change. But that can't happen until we organize, until we become little Obamaites and understand how to use the power of the population right. to get these guys to toe the line. Well, you know what? It, we can, I say piss and moan. I don't know if I should say that. We can piss and moan till the cows come home. But the truth of the matter is, is this is a republic, and ultimately we are the ones responsible for what we get. Right. And we need to start standing up and taking control of the situation so that we can shut them up on the other level. Mm -hmm. That's, it's our power. We can do it. Right. But nobody wants to. We're too busy. We're overwhelmed. We're in debt. We're whatever we are. Right? Well, not so much. You know? Speak up. Tell that Senator, I'm not going to vote for you again. That's why I don't like having her on. She's not really passionate about I'm sorry. It. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I just really believe that, and I know that others think that's naive. I'm just sitting here listening going, wow, this is, she's great. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
Jane, I love you. I love yeah. you too. I think, I think we have to wrap it up. Okay. Jane, um, where are you? Where are you performing someplace soon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, on uh, on Wednesday, July twenty second, yeah. I'll be singing a performance of a little oratorio called Mary Magdalene at Northeast Catholic College. Oh, nice. North, where, yes. and where, where is that? It's in Warner, New Hampshire. Hmm. Warner. Northeast Catholic College. It's on their website, and uh, you get a wonderful lunch. And then this beautiful hour-long oratorio in English that's going to honor the feast day of St. Catherine, uh, St. Catherine, of St. Mary Magdalene. Will you be singing oh. opera? It's, it's an oratorio. oratorio. So it's basically a concert. <laughs> get, we, 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 it's an oratorio. Come on, it's, a, it's a concert Where's opera. Your How's that? Hmm. It's a concert opera. Okay. <laughs> You'll understand everything's going on. It's a beautiful piece. Well, for those out there, if you haven't heard Jane so, sing, um, <laughs> I would think you should put that on your list. Yeah, thank you. Of things to do. My, 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 my friend, so can you put a link to that on the Facebook? Uh, the sure. Rock, paper, hand grenades. Okay. And a link to where people can uh, sign petition? up to petition. Love it. Mm -hmm. We'll do so. I love you, Jane. Thank You're you. the best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My gun. And good night, everyone. I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Good night, you, everyone. You.